When I got blown up and I was down and out and I was wondering why did this happen, I was embarrassed, I was angry, I was questioning am I a bad person, does God hate me? And the biggest question I honestly had, ladies and gentlemen, was why didn't I just die? Hey, how's it going guys? This is 17 Motivational. Today, after this opening, I'm gonna to share you a touching speech from a four limbs amputated former soldier. Travis Mills is a quadruple amputee who was injured in Afghanistan. He found motivation and support from his wife, daughter, and a fellow Marine. Through his recovery, he learned to appreciate life and opportunities and wants to spread the message that with a positive attitude, anything is possible. Enjoy. So as we're going over what we're going to do, we're strapping our gear on. We go out with the minesweeper and we start sweeping the ground back and forth. Back and forth. Nothing alarms us or anything there. I take my backpack off and I set it on the ground. We see my bag is 120 pounds, 120 pounds, hits the ground, and underneath it is a bomb. Man, it takes my right arm, right leg automatically. When I'm on the ground, I think I'm going to die, so I tell the medic, don't worry about it, go save my guys. In my head, I'm just saying, don't freak out, stay calm. They rush me into surgery, right, we're going to fast forward into the surgery here, and they cut my left leg off because it's already gone, and then two days later, they have to cut my left arm off because the skin and neck are tied, so I'm a quadruple amputee. Three days later, I arrived at Walter Reed in Bethesda, Maryland. My wife came up to me, right, and I saw her. And when I finally got the chance to talk to her, I said, Kelsey, you don't have to do this. Take the house, take the cars, take whatever money we have saved up and go. This is not the life I would choose for you. And she thought about it, and she said, you know, I was thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. And then she came around and she said, you know what, handicap parking sounds enticing. I'm, I'm going to stay. But if you can imagine, she actually at 23 and I'm 25 and our daughter, six months old, said, you know what, I'm gonna be here. We're gonna get through this together. So I'm at Walter Reed and I'm trying to recover. I had to find motivation, but I find motivation in my wife and my daughter. And all of a sudden there's a brotherhood at Walter Reed because into my room after I got out of a ketamine coma, which is this uh, case study they did, where they gave me 600 milligrams an hour for five days straight because my phantom limb pain was so bad that when I was hallucinating in and out of my hallucinations, a robot walked into my room and first thing out of this guy's mouth was, hey man, welcome to the club. I said, I don't want to be in your club. He said, kind of late now, don't you think? I said, oh, you got me there. And his name was Todd Nicely. He showed me that with hard work and de uh, determination, I could walk again, drive again. He said, I'm the second ever quadruple empathy, you're the fourth. And two things went off. Number one, this guy showed me the way that I can get better. I can still be there for my family. And number two, he's a Marine. And if a Marine can do it with how dumb they are, you know, I can easily, because I'm, I'm in the Army, I'm obviously brilliant. <laughs> so the things I wanted to accomplish, I wanted to be able to feed myself again. I wanted to be able to pick a fork up and put food in my mouth. You see, I, I couldn't do that for five weeks. At five weeks, I was out of my recovery stage enough where I was healed up and I could grab a fork. I also was tired of sitting in a wheelchair. I thought, you know what, I want to be able to walk again. So seven weeks and four days into my recovery, I took my very first steps at Walter Reed. It was very painful, it was not easy. And as I was walking around the track, they said, you'll walk one lap today. And I went ahead and walked three laps that day. And when I got done, I sat down, took a breather, and realized this could be something that I do. When I got blown up and I was down and out, and I was wondering why did this happen, I was embarrassed, I was angry, I was questioning, am I a bad person? Does God hate me? And the biggest question I honestly had, ladies and gentlemen, was why didn't I just die? Why did I live through this? And I found the answer in my family. And I found the answer in Todd Nicely, that corporal that came to see me that was retired from the Marine Corps, that told me I would be fine. So I decided I was gonna to talk to everybody I could that was at that hospital. So I'd go up and I would say hi, and I'd say, hey, I'm Travis, you're gonna be fine. Same message Todd gave me. From that experience, I don't think my problems outweigh anybody else's. I am fortunate to live in a nation where I can wake up in the morning with no arms and no legs, strap my legs on, Right, throw my arm on, walk downstairs, well, it's not true, I have an elevator, but go in the elevator and go out and live life to the fullest. Take my wife and my daughter wherever we wanna go. The two life lessons that I have learned that I want you to go and pass along to everybody that you meet, that you work with in the medical field, is number one, don't dwell on the past. I learned that because when I was sitting in my hospital bed, closing my eyes and wishing that this did not happen, I realized, you're not gonna change the past. I can't change what happened yesterday, and I can't change what happened six years ago in Afghanistan. 
So I reminisce the 25 great years I had with legs and arms, and I've had six pretty great years without them. And the next thing I will tell you, I can't always control my situation, but I can always control my attitude. I appreciate your time. I'm thankful for the technology out there. This is the end of this video, thank you for watching, please follow me for daily dose of motivation. Bye bye.